hello friends welcome to this lesson in this we'll be talking about you know if the abiotic stress if the abiotic change it remains for a longer time then what do the organisms do and towards the end of the lesson we'll be discussing about some population attributes okay so what are adaptations so there are different different definitions for adaptations the very first is that the adaptation is a dynamic evolutionary process that fits a popular um, a population of organisms to their environment enhancing their evolutionary fitness okay also it is a state reached by the population during the process of this this process okay and thirdly it is a phenotypic or adaptive trait with a functional role in each organism's life that is maintained and has been evolved by the natural selection okay <clears throat> so adaptation they are you know there's something like natural selection only okay so some evolutionary traits some evolutionary benefit given to an organism during the evolution or gained by the organism during the evolution is adaptation okay so whatever the organism does to tackle the environment okay and to live in that organ uh, in that environment which is long term which is sustained is called as adaptation okay any change in an organism to tackle the changed physical conditions which is sustained is called as adaptation okay so what are the examples examples are kangaroo rat in which the internal fat oxidation to produce water as byproduct is done okay and also it produces concentrated urine why because in desert there is no water to preserve water it does these all things in desert plants thick cuticles tomata in <clears throat> deep pits to minimize transpiration and special photosynthetic pathway that is the cam pathway is used examples opuntia in which leaves are reduced to spines and photosynthetic stems <clears throat> also in cold climatic mammals um, they have short ears and uh, and short limbs to minimize heat loss this is allen's rule because see here they have a lot of surface area right and there's a very little volume therefore they reduce that the limbs also they have a lot of surface area so the surface area to volume ratio of these things is uh, high and therefore the heat dissipation would have been higher therefore these are very much reduced also the people living at high altitude they have increased rbc production and increased breathing rate why simple because at high altitude the oxygen concentration the partial pressure of, of oxygen is too low but the requirement of the body is the same the oxygen requirement of the body doesn't change therefore what do we do that Though the oxygen concentration is less we take it many times right if you have to take um, you know you want 10 liter water okay you want uh, 10 liter water and you have 10 bottles of one liter each so you'll fill 10 bottles now if you want 10 liter of uh, 10 liter water and you have bottles of five um, of 0.5 liter each then you'll fill 20 so you'll increase the rate right you increase the number therefore the breathing rate is increased okay also the number of rbc is, is increased to carry more okay also in desert desert lizards they show some behavioral adaptations like whenever there is dark uh, sorry there is uh, cold they bask in sun and whenever they there is um, hot they go towards the shade okay so these all were the adaptations of organisms now comes the population attributes so first of all let us know what is a population okay so there are three characteristics of any group of individuals to call to be called a population the very first is that the individuals they should be living in a well-defined area okay they shouldn't be too much discrete they should be living in a well-defined area let's take the example of organ the population of delhi a well-defined area okay which the organism they should compete or share the same resources okay the same food the same natural resources they should share okay and also they should be able to potentially inbreed right sorry interbreed so the reproduction should be uh, should be possible the organisms should be either sharing the resource or they should be competing for the resources and they should live in a very well defined area then that group of organisms will be called as a population okay and so what are the attributes of population so there is something called birth rate it is the average number of young ones born in a period of time with reference to the 
members of the population there then comes the death rate which is the average number of deaths in a period of time with reference to the members of the population then the sex ratio which is the number of females and males per thousand individuals then age pyramid the plot of age distribution the percentage of individuals of a given age of a given age group so among these all the things are self-explanatory what is important is what is age pyramid okay so age pyramid is basically you know a graph kind of thing which describes that what percentage of population is in what what age group like uh, let me explain you this with some diagram so first of all let's know what the population growth okay so the population growth is of three different types the expanding population the stable population and declining population okay that how is the um, changes in, in population are occurring okay so see and this is the age okay 0 to 4 5 to 9 10 to 14 so the 10 to 14 and 5 to 9 this is the pre pre reproductive age and after 15th okay 15 to let's take uh, till 40 this is the reproductive age okay and i shouldn't correctly take it from 20 legally okay but biologically we can take it from 15 so 15 till uh, 40 is the reproductive age group Sorry, uh, yeah, reproductive age, age group, and before that is pre-reproductive. So here, the number of individuals in the pre-reproductive age group is more than the number of individuals in the reproductive age group, or uh, which is more than the number of individuals in the post-reproductive age group. So after some years, what will happen? This will go here, and this will go here. So the number of individuals in the reproductive age group will increase. Therefore, the number of uh, the uh, you know instances of reproduction will increase and the birth rate will increase and such population will go on expanding and expanding. So got it? <clears throat> okay, now let's take the example of another uh, population in which the number of individuals in the pre-reproductive age group and the reproductive age group is same. So after some years this will go here. So the pre-reproductive will become reproductive but the number will remain same right today it is here it will go here the both the numbers are same so the pre-reproductive will go to reproductive age group and the number won't change it will be uh, same as the previous one only therefore the number of births will remain same therefore the population growth rate will remain the same only there will be no change and see in this population in this population at present the reproductive age group the number of individuals in the reproductive age group it is more than the pre-reproductive age group therefore after some times they will go to the reproductive age group and this number is less therefore after some years the number of individuals in the reproductive age group will be less and because of that the birth rate will decrease okay so that is it in the age pyramids and there is something called population density it is the number of individuals present per unit area at a given time and it is not strictly the number of individuals because there are a lot of instances where we cannot uh, you know we cannot count the number like the number of algae you cannot count therefore you take the biomass into considera consideration the number of bacteria you don't count we count the number of colony okay therefore generally speaking it is the number of individuals but in some instances this is not exactly the number of individuals okay so that's it from this lesson thank you